Today I'll explain how to work a basic open cable on the knitting machine. The method I'm demonstrating requires a two bed setup like this because some of the stitches, the ones that create the cable ropes, will always be on the main bed. Those ropes will appear on a background of purl stitches, which is always knitted by the front or river bed. If you normally knit on a European double bed machine, such as a Passip or Superba, you are probably accustomed to calling these the front and back beds. On an artisan, you most likely use the Japanese terminology of main bed and river. It doesn't matter. Any two bed setup that has needles all the way across both beds will work. I'm demonstrating today using projects from the Pretzel Logic book which is now a companion to mostly classic cables, and the two are sold as a two-volume set. In mostly classic cables, I describe these as cables with traveling stitches, which is quite true. But I have discovered that the most commonly used hand knitting term is open cables. So that's the term I decided to use when writing pretzel logic. The open cables in pretzel logic are knitted following charts like this one. I'm not going to talk very much about the chart in this movie because I went into it in a lot of detail in the last movie and in order to get your instructions to understand what I'm doing you can go and review that movie. Today we will focus on the knitting operations. In the program notes you'll find a link to the page where this two book set is sold and also to where the entire cable video playlist is. In order to knit smoothly on two beds, of course, we need weights. I often use either this or this. The first one is the homemade heavy comb from my Cool Tools and Cheap Tricks book. The second is a comb from a hobby machine. It doesn't necessarily have to match the gauge of the machine we're working on if you can safely hang it in the fabric. Another option is to start in waste yarn, use your river comb, hang it in the zigzag row or in just the waste yarn fabric. You don't necessarily have to knit a zigzag row. And once you have it knitting successfully, knit in a row of ravel cord, change to the main yarn and proceed. For basic open cables, consider that if you have 100 needles on each bed, you have only 100 possible needle positions because we're going to rack so that the beds oppose perfectly. The same charts may be used for both basic and embossed cables, but the basic cable version will be indistinguishable from the hand knitted version of the same cable and it will make a narrower fabric than the embossed cable version. Embossed is on the bottom, basic is on the top. Here, basic is on the left, embossed on the right. Here, the aqua sample is basic, what we'll be knitting today. The other two are embossed. And you can see a slight difference in texture along with the difference in width of the fabric. So now let's actually knit. Most of the open cable projects in the book begin with all the stitches on the river, except possibly the end stitches. I don't personally have a problem with it on most of my machines, but some Japanese ribbers like to ditch the end stitch if it's on the river or front bed. So it's okay if that stitch is going to be caught in the seam to place it on the main bed if that helps. For most projects, I have you set up with all the stitches on the river, except perhaps one at each end, knit two or more rows, and then transfer stitches to the main bed to become the cable ropes. The beds should be racked so that the needles oppose perfectly. On Japanese machines, that swing P, but the better thing to keep in your mind is that if all the needles came forward, they would crash into each other. In this case, we're not going to do that, so there's no worry, but we get a nicer fabric, the better adjusted the two beds are. For all of the projects in Pretzel Logic, we make some sort of action on the fabric every two rows. So we knit two rows, and in this case, the cable ropes begin moving apart. So following the chart, 
every group of four stitches is two cable ropes. Two stitches make one rope. We first move them each one needle over. Each pair goes one needle away from its original position, leaving two empty needles in the middle. What we just did places some of the main or back bed needles in opposition to some of the river needles. We can never let that situation remain. So we trade places, moving the river stitches to the positions vacated by the main bed stitches. The river stitches don't show up on the charts. This is something assumed in the instructions, and that's why I am making it abundantly clear. For a basic open cable, always fill the positions, and I mean positions across the bed, because each stitch stays on its own bed. Always fill them with the river stitches that whose positions have been taken up by the recently moved main bed stitches. Knit two rows, then see what the chart tells us to do next. In this case, the cable ropes continue moving apart. On the chart, every action, in this case moving the cables, which is indicated by little arrows in the same boxes that the stitches are marked with K. So the arrows are telling you which direction, and we went over that fully in the first movie. Every action takes place after knitting the row. The cable ropes have all gotten into their new positions. Now we fill the gaps with the front bed or river stitches. So they've traded positions. Both of the moves we've made so far are part of the larger cable, but they're actually crosses because the stitches on the two beds trade places, but we did not trade places with any stitches on one bed. After knitting two rows, this time the cable stitches will continue to move apart. And as before, the river stitches will move to the vacated positions. And we have completed another set of crosses. The same thing occurs one more time knit two rows, move the cable ropes apart, and when we do, four stitches now abut, two cable ropes meet. At this point in the design, the instructions tell us to knit our two rows and then actually cross a cable. And it does tell us in this chart the direction to cross the cable. Right over left this time. Right over left means that each pair of stitches is lifted on one tool, but the tool on the right is replaced on the left needles. The stitches on the tool on the right are replaced on the left needle first, then the left stitches. I'll keep on knitting and following the chart while we review the chart a minute. Bottom line that's showing is showing the stitches moving together before they actually come together, and then we cable them knit two rows, and begin to move outward. While cabling, there is no need to move any river or front bed stitches because we haven't taken up any of their places. But as we resume moving the ropes apart, of course we do need to resume moving the river or front bed stitches to take the places vacated by the cable rope stitches. Note that arrow directions is telling us which way to move the stitches after knitting the row. We know this one is a cable row because it's shaded in yellow, and we know to replace the right stitches first on their new needles because there are dots next to the two right stitches. Very easy symbols to learn. Whenever a needle on either bed becomes emptied of a stitch, it's super important to make certain that needle is out of work. See how this one is a little forward? It could potentially get confused, pick up a stitch, and start to knit. So before knitting the next row, I really need to run my finger across and get it completely out of the way. What I have been demonstrating on is the aqua pillow on the left. Because there were empty needles on the front bed, 
we have this very obvious texture on the back of the fabric. If we wanted to get rid of that texture because both sides of the fabric would be in view, we could use the same design with embossed cables, and I will show you that in the next movie.